Hello, and welcome to Better Than Art School. This lecture is on one and two point perspective, and I hope that it helps you understand these powerful systems for creating the illusion of deep space. Okay, a lot of people don't believe in perspective intellectually, or they don't trust it enough. I see this a lot in my students. But look at this little illusion. Even if you don't believe it, it still works. So all three of these silhouetted figures are the exact same height. If you don't believe me, you can try to measure them on the screen. They're the exact same height. But here's the deal. They're in one point perspective. So that the fellow in front of the line looks much taller than the other guys. Right? Okay, that's one example. Here's an even more simple example. This is called the Muir Liar illusion. So if I were if you're in my class, I would say, okay, draw two, measure two six inch lines, keep them a few inches apart. On the top one, measure one inch lines going in at an angle, and on the bottom one, one inch lines going out. And even though you measured everything, you still see the top line as being shorter after you've done the side lines, right? The bottom one looks wider. And you might say, well, why is that? And I would say that the top one looks like an object, like a box, and the bottom one looks like a space, like a room, okay? So the way that we see has, it's full of illusions and the way that our brains and eyes parse reality isn't so clear as we think. Okay, so this is the most simple way to show you how one-point perspective works. This of course is some train tracks. They appear to come to a point. Of course we know that doesn't happen in the real world because the train would explode and everybody would die. So that's not at all what's happening. What happens actually is that things get smaller when they get further away from you. And we know that if our friend walks across a field, we see them getting smaller and smaller. We don't think, oh my gosh, Sharon is uh, you know, losing vertical height as she's getting you know, a few seconds older or something. We just think, oh, you know, Sharon's walking away from us. Okay, in this little picture here, you can see that the railroad tracks are also getting smaller as they go back. And they're getting less and less wide as it's getting further. And then they seem to come to a point on what's called the horizon line. And that point is called the vanishing point. That's how perspective works, very basically. And I'll get much more detailed here in a sec. Okay. Before I, before I jump into one-point perspective, I just want to say that using perspective is a tool for making things more expressive. And filmmakers use it all the time. This is an example from the classic movie The Shining and by Stanley Kubrick. And you can see that all the one-point lines are pulling you right in between these two scary little twin ghost girls. Okay, so it's a tool for making your scenes. It's a tool for pulling somebody into the scene. This is a very memorable scene, and I think a lot of it is because it uses one-point perspective. So don't think of perspective as this tedious thing that you have to learn. Think of it as a tool in your toolbox that can make your drawings pull us in and hold us there, or, or pop things out. Okay, let's talk about one-point perspective. First thing to know about one-point perspective, the point does not have to be in the middle of the page, okay? Just like when you're drawing a still life object or drawing a person, th that person or that thing does not have to be smack in the middle of the page. It never has to be. In fact, it's usually better to use rule of thirds or some other compositional idea because usually putting something right in the middle is a little too quick and easy. Okay, second thing to say about this, where would you say this person is when they're drawing this? Well, they're not lying on the ground, right? They're probably up on a balcony looking into the space, right? And the way that that works is your, your eye level, which is what your vanishing point is on, is going to move with you. If you squat down, it's going to come down. If you're going to stand up on a bunch of um, phone books, if you know what a phone book is, <laughs> then it's going to get higher, okay? So it's going to move with you. And the point is also going to move with you. So it's like a target. The target moves with you. If you go to the right side, then the point moves to the right. If you go to the left side, it moves to the left. Okay? And so this person's up high. If they're drawing this from down on the floor, the vanishing point would move down and everything would change. Okay? 
All right, this is a very simple one point drawing from one of my students. And I remember asking her, can you see the top of the rail? And she said, not quite. So I was like, okay, so the rail is probably on your eye level. If you can't see the top of something, say it's a stairs or it's a rail, if you can't see the top of it, that means that it's on your eye level. Things flatten out when they get to your eye level. Uh, inversely, do you see this structure that sticks out from the pillar? That thing, you can see the bottom plane of it. And that means that your eye level is below that, right? Okay, so she's kind of in the middle of the hallway. She's maybe slightly to the left. And then her eye level is about in the middle because when you sit on a drawing horse, in this case, or a chair, and say the hallway is eight feet tall, you're about halfway up the hallway, or a little under halfway up the hallway. This is a shaded drawing. It's slightly more complicated. The same, a similar space, the same school that the other one was from. And similarly, you cannot quite see on top of the rail. So she's sitting on a drawing horse looking down the hallway. So the eye level comes down. She's in the middle of the hallway. So everything kind of comes to the middle, but it's not quite in the middle because when you're sitting in this hallway, you're slightly lower than the halfway point. And the way that this drawing works is it's a shading kind of it bleeds out, right? It, it pulls you in to the center, the focal point, and then it kind of bleeds out. When you're looking at this drawing and you're asking, okay, how do you do a drawing like this? Well, here's, here's what I would suggest, is you start out with a back wall. The back wall of this drawing does not require any perspective. What it does require is arm length measurement. That means you hold your pencil out and you actually measure everything, the width, the height, and you measure it again and then you bring that measurement down to your page and you draw it at that size. Don't try to draw it the exact right kind of rendering or the, right, the exact right detail. Instead, try to just get everything the right size, okay? You don't need any linear perspective to draw that back wall because it's parallel to you. What you need perspective for is for drawing the ceiling, for drawing the floor, for drawing the wall, for drawing the rail. That's what you need the perspective for. So you draw this back wall first. Now, its position on the page is going to be contingent on where you are. Are you in the middle of the hallway? Like I said, are you on the left side of the hallway? Well, then that whole little box that you see at the end of the hallway is going to move with you. Okay, it's just like how the moon follows you at night. If you've ever walked around and noticed the moon seems to be creepily following you everywhere. So you can kind of mix it up. You can draw, you know, dragons and creatures uh, on your drawing, but the but what happens is if you use a perspective system, and this is still one point perspective, it actually makes the space feel much, much larger and able to contain many more multitudes. And so this dragon seems like, you know, it, it's living in this realistic, plausible kind of space. Okay, so big takeaways here. One point perspective is is a system of mostly drawing things like hallways and a system where you're parallel to part of it but then other parts of it are oblique to you or at an angle to you and those parts that are oblique will all come to one single point the top of this wall on our right the bottom of the wall on our right the top of this little uh, perch on our left the bottom, all of it is going to one single point, okay? That's how one point works. That's why it's called one point. You have to be ruthless and relentless with that one point. Don't let anything go to a separate point unless it's um, not parallel to those to the rest of the space. If it's built on right angles, it'll all go to the same point, okay? So that's one point perspective. Now two point perspective. How does two point perspective work? Okay, this is a really simple drawing, uh, but it shows you how two-point perspective works. So unfortunately, when you're actually doing two-point perspective in the real world, when you're drawing from life, usually one of the two points is going to go off your page, and sometimes both do. But basically, here's how it works. So notice that they're both on your eye level again. Just like in one-point perspective, your eye level is your first the first thing you do is you sit down and you say, okay, am I looking down at the structure? Am I looking up at it? Am I looking across at it? And all those things will alter your eye level, right? And the other thing about two-point perspective is luckily in one and two-point perspective, all your vertical lines just stay vertical. Make sure they're parallel to the edges of your piece of paper. Make sure that they're as straight up and down as humanly possible so they don't get confused for converging lines. Okay. So now we're looking at this little house, and we're not looking up at it so much as we're looking across at it, right? We're, we're pretty 
high. Maybe we're up on another house or something and we're looking down at it. So our eye level is fairly high and all of the things like the windows and the doorways and the roof, it all converges to one of those two vanishing points. There's one other diagonal on this drawing and it's the rooftop itself, but that's actually diagonal in nature. It's not diagonal because it's converging. It's not diagonal because it's at an oblique angle to us. Okay, and the way two point works is in one point basically you're looking down a hallway. That would be the easiest example because if you're looking down a hallway, what happens is the back part of the hallway will be parallel to you and then the other walls will converge to one point that you're looking straight at. In two point perspective, now you're actually parallel to a corner. Okay, and it's the, the, the more parallel you are to the corner of the structure, the easier it'll be to find your point. Okay, so these are some student drawings. Notice that two point perspective, if you're looking up at a structure, the lines seem to converge down. The, main, the first lines you'll probably notice at the top of the building, those lines converge down to your vanishing point. Then if you look down there by the trash can and by the bushes, those lines converge up towards the vanishing point, okay? So you might ask, well, how do I find my vanishing point? Well, first thing you do is you measure stuff out, okay? Just like in one point, uh, one point perspective drawing, you start from the wall that's uh, parallel to you, and two point perspective drawing, you measure out the corner of the building. Okay, then you measure out the far right end of the building. Then you measure out the far left end of the building. You get your measurements down first. You always do that first in perspective drawing because it won't lock in unless you do arm length measurement, unless you're drawing things at optical size. Everything will be slightly off if you don't do that. Okay, then, then you start, you take your ruler or your pencil and you follow the angles until they intersect with your eye level. The way you find your eye level is just kind of asking yourself, like, where am I? You know, if you have a laser pointer, it's a little easier, but usually you can kind of figure out, am I looking, can I see the top of that trash can? Well, then my eye level is just slightly above the trash can, for instance. Is this, and then you take some lines down, intersecting uh, your eye level from the top. You take some lines up that are intersecting lines from below. And then as you crisscross these lines, you'll get closer and closer to figuring out where your eye level is. So this is a pretty complex drawing, but it's actually made much simpler by using the two-point perspective system because you know all of these lines are gonna, if they're not vertical, they're gonna go to either the right point or the left point, full stop. They all go to one of those two points, okay? Just a few more examples so you kind of get the flavor of this. This is a, you know, these little structures sticking out the one, if you look right in the middle of the drawing, those two structures, the one on our right is going to converge to our left, and the one on the left is going to converge to the right. So that's, that would, that's what would happen if you're drawing the inside of a room, is that the right wall will converge left, and the left wall will converge right. But if you're drawing the outside of a building, it's easy because the right side goes to your right, and the left side goes to your left. If that's confusing, uh, rewind it and listen to that a few more times. It's simpler than it sounds, but I know when I say it, it sounds confusing. Okay, just a few more examples. So this one, you can actually see all the converging lines. And this, this drawing is kind of complicated. It's hard to figure out, like, where does each plane go? Does, which plane goes to the right? Which plane goes to the left? And you have to kind of do some kind of investigative work and kind of take your pencil and figure out what the angle is. And if it's going down and to your right, well, shocker, it's going to go to your right point. If it's going down to the left or up to the left or up to the right, that's how you determine which way this thing's going. Okay. And of course, just like with one point, you can use the one or two point drawing system and then add color or add fantasy elements and then make the drawing more interesting from there. And I hope you try all of this stuff. Try out one point perspective, try two point perspective. You can do it from your imagination. You can do it from life. I recommend doing it from life first because just like everything else, drawing from life is the ultimate teacher. Nature is the closest thing we have to truth or the way we see nature. So the best thing to do is to study nature and to let that, you know, be your guide. Okay, there's a panda doing a somersault. Okay, this is Better Than Art School signing off. I hope you got something out of this lecture. Please subscribe and hit like, and I really appreciate it. Thanks.